Hello everybody, welcome to another, well it's once again it's a tutorial with goggles so we're just going to um, talk about transmissions in this one because I've, I've had the question a few times now and I guess I've kind of been ignoring it to a certain extent uh, or I've answered it in my discord where I did a big spiel about it, what it means, what, what the numbers mean when you're looking at the uh, transmissions in, in the shop. And in particular, when you're using the real Eaton Fuller transmission mod, because there's so many transmissions there, you know, for every every different um, um, configuration. Think of like eight eight plus one, ten plus one, ten, uh, twelve, thirteen, fifteen. There's a whole bunch of them, and in the game, pretty much just use. Uh, 10, 13, and 15, or sorry, 18, and 18 being the preferred transmission. And I'll just touch on that first and explain why. And to do that, the first thing to do is to understand some of the terminology around uh, transmission and final drive ratios. So the final drive is the ratio of the rear axle or differential. And um, it's a key component and they lump it in with the transmission in this game so our so they don't describe a separate rear axle ratio they it's part of that number you see when you're looking at a transmission so what you'll typically see is say you're looking at the 18 speeds which is probably the most used transmission in the game uh, and you'll see a number it'll say 14.40 or it'll say 12.19 then it'll say 0.73 or 0 0.73, and then 3.36, for example, or 3.90, 3.56, or 4.56. And what you're seeing there are the ratios that are involved in the drivetrain from the crankshaft speed of the engine through to the uh, final drive ratio, which is going to determine the RPM that the real rear, rear wheel is turning. So the 1440 is your first gear or your lowest gear. So with the uh, 18 speed that's back here, it's the same with uh, the 13 and the 10. So you're going to bring it back into the low gear position. That's going to be 1440 times that the engine turns around for every one time the transmission rotates out the back. So the output of the transmission will be one for every 14.4 times the engine goes around. So that's all measured in RPM. So 1440 RPM, one RPM out the back of the transmission. That's that one to one, uh, you know, okay, so let's just leave it there, 1440, one times the tranny I'll turn. Now that goes through the drive shaft, goes through the differential. The differential in the case I'm going to cite here is 3.36. So that means the input of the differential is going around 3.36 times for every one time the axle moves. So uh, now you've got a total, your total uh, reduction from the engine to the uh, back. Uh, you've We've got it all stepped down, so the engine's spinning over quite a bit faster than the axle is going in low gear. And the differential ratios are often referred to, like I, myself and anybody I know, talks about a 336 gear ratio as a tall ratio or um, a low numeric value, but this is, gets really confusing, so you got to just get your head around this. Uh, if it's a low numeric value, that equates to high speed. Or if it's a tall ratio, which you think of as big, it's a small number. And the tall ratio is referred to by people commonly as something for highway speeds. So if you're talking about your hot rod or your, you know, your pickup truck or whatever, and it's got a a tall gear in it, you know, it could have a 308 or something in the back. That means it's going to go quite fast on the highway, but it doesn't have that big reduction for pulling. 
So a high number, like a 411 in your truck, is going to be really good for pulling and heavy loads, but it's going to go pretty slow on the highway. So that big number on the diff equates to a lower speed, or what quite commonly referred to as a shorter gear. So a shorter gear is going to make the thing go slower, but it's going to be, uh, be able to pull. So I'm going to refer to them as tall and short. So the diff that is tall has got a low number. So it would be like a 336 in this case. And a, um, a short gear is going to be like a 390 in the diff. Okay, so we'll just get that out of the way. So that's, got the, that's the last number you're looking at when you're looking at your transmissions. So let's go into the shop here and look at these numbers as they play out. And we've got the real Eaton Fuller Transmission Mod going here. So we've got transmissions coming out the wazoo. And what I've got in this truck right now is an 18-speed, 1440, that's first gear. 073 is the overdrive in the transmission. So what that means is for every one time the input shaft of the transmission turns, the output shaft, or sorry, for every point, seven three times the input shaft turns the output shaft is going to turn once so your engine is running slower or uh, your input is going slower than your output so that's overdrive so in your car uh nowadays modern cars have you know anywhere from one to two or even three overdrives and what that does is for fuel mileage so it gets the rpm down when you're booting down the highway so um, in the case of the trucks here, we have, in this case, this transmission is a 0.73 overdrive. So every 0.73 times the input of the transmission goes around, the output is going to go uh, uh, once. So it's speeding up the output. And that means the engine can run slower for the output you're sending to the differential. The differential, in this case, at 3.36, is going to divide that input by 3.36 and uh, reduce the amount of times that the wheel is turning around uh, the rear wheel so that's what the numbers mean so 1440 first gear or lowest gear the 073 is what you're going to have in high range in 18th gear and that'll be your 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 final drive at 18th gear it'll be coming out of the transmission uh, faster than the rpm going in and just to put a number on that if we're driving at 1500 rpm in uh 18th gear with a uh, 1440 your engine rpm is act or sorry your um output rpm goes up to 20 i believe it's 2100 rpm so it steps up the rpm by quite a bit so the overdrive is really a cool thing and uh, it helps you achieve, achieve some kind of fuel mileage and speed. So now let's look at the numbers of what happens with different transmissions. So I did a bunch of calculations here, did all the math on this, and it took a while. <laughs> I'm no mathematician. But anyway, let's look at it. So let's look at this transmission right now, and let's put it in first gear. We'll go 1500 RPM. What that does, is through all of the reductions in the drivetrain it's going to make the rear wheel turn 31 times so 31 times and you take the circumference of the wheel and get it in feet per minute you're going to go 341 feet in a minute or 3.88 miles an hour okay so that'll give you an idea what you're doing with this first gear now uh, that same transmission uh, when you get it into top gear uh, with the overdrive in 18th gear and that diameter, uh, you know, all of, everything being equal, uh, 1500 RPM is going to make, instead of 31 RPM at the wheel, 611 RPM at the wheel. And that's 6,715 feet per minute, which is 76 miles an hour. So with that tall gear, the 336 being a tall gear, you're going to get 76 miles an hour. 
Now, just while we're on that topic, we can jump down to uh, a transmission that has a, um, oh, I did it over here, a 390 uh, final drive. And if you got a 390 final drive with everything else being the same, what happens at the wheel, instead of 611 RPM, you're getting 526. So a lot fewer RPM because that 3.90 diff is further reducing your uh, RPM at the wheel, at the rear wheels. So and that, that's a, what I call a short gear. And that gives you 5,715 feet per minute or 66 miles an hour. So it's 10 miles an hour slower. So when you're looking through your transmissions here and you see this differential, 336, and you go up here and you find one that's 390, this 390 diff is going to give you less speed on the highway. But with that shorter gear, you're going to get more torque multiplication because the engine is able to turn around more times, in, input more power impulses uh, into the work that's required, and you'll have better pulling power. So if you don't have a very big engine, or your truck's not super powerful and you want to go do a heavy haul or whatever, you might consider a 390 or if it's really heavy, a 456 or something, because this is really going to slow your overall speed down. But in the case of special transport, you're only going to go 40 miles an hour max. So you could jump up to a 456 easily and still be fine. Um, if you're wanting to go highway speeds, you might, you know, a 390 might be a little better because 1500 RPM is a nice RPM to run the truck at. You know, you can go a little higher, 1700, whatever. But 66 miles an hour at uh, 1500 RPM, you know, it's okay. You wouldn't want to drive all day like that. You'd use a lot of fuel, but um, it's fine. So that's the difference in the final drive with the same um first gear ratio and well which is irrelevant in final drive but anyway that that's what the the 390 does so you can see a difference between 336 and 390 a uh, difference of 10 miles an hour with everything else being equal and i'm basing this on 24 5 inch uh an average of 24 5 inch uh, tires so a tall 24.5 is, uh, what was it, 43 inches uh, tall. And a short, low profile one is 41 inches. So I'm just using 142 to split it in the middle. So I don't get in an argument, you know, well, it's this, it's that. It's, I'm taking the average on the tires. So now let's look at what happens with a um, 12.19 first gear. So when we look up through the list of, tra oh, here we go, 12.19. 073, 336. So everything's the same except for the first gear ratio. So we don't need to look at the final drive speed. It's going to be identical. We're going to go with this transmission at 15 RPM. We're going to go 76 miles an hour. With the uh, 1440, 336 down here somewhere. With this one, our speed in first gear at 1500 rpm was 3.88 miles an hour so with that other number 1219 here what this does the input shaft of the transmission is going 12.19 times for every one time the output goes so that's fewer times the engine is going around so what that means is you have less uh, reduction in the transmission in first gear, which means you have fewer power pulses from the engine affecting the output. So it's a taller gear. So that's a 1219 to one is that lower number equates to taller or less power, higher speed. So your first gear isn't going to be as effective and it bears out in the numbers here because at this, you're going to get instead of 31 RPM, you're going to get 36 RPM at the rear wheel, which is not what you want for pulling. 
or if you're doing really heavy loads and you want to take off with that you know that uh trail king 360 with 368,000 pound railway locomotive you don't want a 1219 first gear uh but anyway what it equates to instead of just 341 feet in a minute you're going to go 402 feet in a minute it's quite a bit more and you're going to go 4.57 miles an hour as opposed to 3.88 so when you see the 1219 if you're running you know reefers or um, uh, lighter loads uh, you're not getting into the heavy haul stuff or you know triple low boy stuff 1219 is fine and what it does is um, your gear ratio because that is a lower number between that number and your final drive there's less so it's a uh, best way to describe it would be um the division so you've got 18 gears so you're taking that that space between those numbers and dividing it 18 times well because there's less the number is smaller the division between the gears is tighter so it's like a closer ratio in your transmission so the drop between gears and rpm is going to be a little less which is you know quicker shifting you don't have to wait quite as long when you're floating gears for it to uh, drop rpm it's you know it's it's not a big deal it's negligible but you're going to have a when you roll away in first or second third whatever you're starting off in it's going to roll away a little quicker it'll be a little bit more load on the vehicle but with a lighter load pulling away you go so 1219 is cool for that purpose um then uh, let's see what happens with uh, so we've, we've looked at that so now we know what a 18 speeds can when we compare those available first gear ratio or low gear ratio 219 versus 1440 so it's going to make a little bit difference in pulling off the line the um then we'll we'll look at uh, and then we looked at the final drive ratio so the 30 through 390 is okay it's a good compromise transmission and it gives you fewer um less uh, top top or uh, cruising speed it knocks it down a bit but um it'll pull a little better than a 336 if you got lots of power go with the 336 now the 13 speed um yeah we looked at that you know i it's got a 1229 first gear typically as opposed to a 219 and that's going to not make that's not going to make much difference but the final thing we'll look at is a 10 speed in the 10 speeds there's a like look at all the transmissions in here we, you know we can't take all day and go through all of them but the numbers apply right like this 15 speed 1694 1 1.00411 on this one for example so input shaft is going to spin 16.94 times it has no overdrive so one to one is your output uh at 411 gear like that thing is going to be that's a beast that's not going to get you going very fast on the highway and it's going to pull pretty good off the line with that 1694 but we can get way up here we'll see something pretty extreme when we get up to the 10 speeds um we have some 10 speeds in here with some crazy first gears and you definitely don't want to put this in your truck for anything <laughs> i don't know what you do with it oh there's some 11 speeds we have it in tens as well let's see if i can find that 10. oh i have to go back to the 11 if i don't find it here oh i didn't see it I'd have to just drop down to that 11 again. I'm just looking at the first gears ratios. Oh, there's a 1958. That's pretty nuts. And there's something even wackier in here. Oh, where'd it go? I'd like to find it to show you. Oh, here we go. It's 11 speed so here we've got a uh now which one did i calculate uh okay 336 gear so this um where is it 
here. This one, I did a calculation on this transmission. It's got a 26 to 1 first gear ratio. So that's like for pulling stumps, you know, embedded in concrete out of the ground. Like that thing would pull, well, I hate to say why, I'm not going <laughs> to get vulgar, but uh, you all know the sayings. That would pull crazy. And uh, this one, in, it's pretty amazing. So this one uniquely has a overdrive still with an 11 speed. So that's a pretty uh, unique transmission right there. Um, and what we got is uh, 26 to 1. So 26 times that input shaft is going to turn for every one out the back. And what that does, and let's just go back really quick. We'll look at that 18 speed that, you know, my preferred transmission. Our RPM at the rear wheel at 1500 RPM is 31. Compare that to 17 RPM. It's not quite half. So you're going really slow, like the wheels are barely turning, but you've got so many more power impulses uh, going through the drivetrain to turn the, the rear wheels that few times. It's really, the engine is working extremely well for you. Um, we were going 341 feet in a minute in first gear at 1500. Now we're only going 188 feet. And our speed with the... Uh, uh, 1440 was 3.88 miles an hour. We're only going 2.1 miles an hour now at 1500 in first gear. So, or low gear, I, I keep saying first, it's low. Yeah, low is here, first is up here. Uh, so, now, um, and you, oh yeah, the other thing I forgot to mention is you see these numbers uh, on a lot of these transmissions. It'll uh, have a number up here. And uh, I think this is the uh, calculated final drive ratio for the uh, transmission. But because this one here, see, it's 1542, one to one. And it says 1542 here. Now, if you get an overdrive, that's going to change. So here's a 1411 first gear ratio with an 080 uh, overdrive. So that bumps this up, 1770. So that's, if you're looking at these numbers, wondering what that is. And of course, OD is an overdrive here. And some of them mention it, some don't. Um, now let's, I'll talk about a few different things about the transmissions. Now it's my understanding, I may, I may get corrected on this, but you don't get a transmission retarder on a standard transmission that I'm aware of. I believe that's something to do with the uh, Ultra shifts or, uh, oh, here it says ultra shift, but with the automatically shifted transmissions or automatic, and that were, that's a hydraulic uh, uh, retarder. And that's not the same as a Jake brake. And you can, um, it's, you know, the same effect as a Jake brake where you're using, generating hydraulic pressure to decrease the speed of the truck and aid the braking. I have a retarder control on here. I can adjust the amount of retard on my dash panel. But um, the thing I like about in-game using a retarder, a transmission with retarder, even if it's not, uh, doesn't equate to real life, is the retarder. If you set your cruise control speed to, let's just do this, I'll show you where. Uh, I don't want to save those changes. I want to leave. <coughs> okay, so we'll go look at options. And I'll show you something cool in here, just in case you didn't know this. Go to options. And we go to game preferences. We drag this thing down. And we're looking for a smart cruise control. And you can set the tolerance here, the cruise control five or 10 kilometers an hour or three or six miles an hour. You set it set it to zero, like here. And what that does is when you're in particular with special transport is where it comes in handy, is when you're setting your cruise control of 40 miles an hour to follow the pilot vehicle um, with zero tolerance 
and you, you know you look in your mirrors if it's dark or whatever you see the brake lights are coming on and what the um, and quite a few of the trucks will have an audible warning uh, that you'll hear like a little beep going off like a busy signal on a phone or it all depends on the truck and what you what it's doing is controlling the the speed of the truck it's not letting it run away and it'll keep it at 40 miles an hour going downhill which is a really handy feature for special transport so just thought I'd mention that and uh, now the other final thing we'll talk about is um, uh, shifting the different transmissions so <laughs> the 10 speed if you're using a shifter is pretty basic you have no splitter on the side here it doesn't do any it's ineffective and you start in first gear you work your way through the gears with the range selector down and you get to fifth that's fifth gear and you want to get to six you pull your range up and go here and that's six seven eight nine ten and you want to shift down from here back down to low range and back to the first or low gear hole and you're down to uh, fifth gear from tenth and that's how the 10 speed works there are trucks that are nine speeds but they don't have that transmission in here i don't think a nine speed you would be over here low range in fifth gear and for a nine you bring your range up and you go to the first hole and that's going to be six seven eight nine and that's how a 10 and nine speed work at 13 uh, where you get your 13 gears is you start in the low and Bear in mind, like when you're driving, you, you know, I start in uh, first or third, second, whatever. I, say, I I start all over the place depending on how I'm feeling or whatever. Skip gears. We'll get to that in a minute. First goes, 13 goes one, two, three, four, five. And there's no, no range, or uh, sorry, no split. Those are four straight gears. Then you pull your range up and you can go back to first. You don't go back to low go to this hole here and you have your range up now with the splitter back now you're in sixth gear seventh gear pull that back eighth gear ninth gear tenth gear eleventh gear twelfth gear and you split fours thirteenth gear so you split these four here that's eight gears plus the initial five you had down here so one two three four five and then these four split with the splitter is another eight is 13 gears now the 18 is uh it's essentially the same as a 15 speed except for you you add four gears uh well you can five because you can split uh here and you can uh, low gear has a, a split in it so you've got the option to shift 10 gears without going out of low range so you're in low range so you got high low high low high low high low hello so that's 10 gears right there first through fifth with the range selector down splitting each gear and you seldom have to do that like with the like even with the heaviest of loads i think the heaviest loads maybe have you know split um what's fourth gear on the gate here or or third really low one two three four so you might split that with a really heavy load you might split that with a moderately heavy load but very seldom and typically if i'm driving a load with say it's fifty thousand pounds or something like that i would start off go through these four gears here just straight no splitting bring the range up i go to uh, the first hole with it in splitter back now we're in high range and i would still shift the next gear uh without splitting now in this gear i would split that one and then split split and uh you see it's just less shift less shifting and you're making progress that way if you're shifting every gear you're spending a lot of time shifting and not as much accelerating away but if you need to you need to that's the way it is so you get a feel for your load and you know sometimes if it's really light uh you can you, you know you can get up fairly high in the range before you start splitting gears and bear in mind with the 18 speed you've got 
that piece of pie that you're dividing up is divided, imagine it divided into 18 pieces. And so they're each a little bit smaller section. Well, that's a little bit of RPM band you're working in each time. So you've got that much advantage. If you take that piece of pie and cut it in 10, well, that's a much bigger RPM range you got to run through on each gear in order to get to the end result, which is highway speed. So the 18 speed really slices the pie up. Your uh, and is really good. Now, final thing, uh, skipping gears. So if you watch the videos quite often, I'll go from the first hole. I'll just go right over here right away. And uh, so it's low range. Uh, splitters back. You're in low range. And just zoom over there. you got to wait longer if you're floating gears for the RPM to drop because the RPM has got to drop a whole lot further than it does if you're just going straight back as you're you've got you know this the speed matching of the transmission has to, it takes a lot longer um and then i will go high range and right back here so now you've gone through a whole passel of gears and you move the stick twice and for a lot for a low low uh low weight that's really handy and the other one i'll do is i'll if it's really light i'll be in uh back here in second gear counting this is low so this is low first second and not counting the splits so i'll be here i'll run over to here and split her back low range and i'll if it's that light i'll bring the range selector up now and i'll put the splitter ahead and then go here so you jump up like you're really making progress <laughs> you're getting going and uh you bring it straight back so you're in a lot higher gear here than if I was doing this one and I was going splitting to here back to here pull it back and then split this one forward so when I do this one and go like this and uh, with this in high as I go up um, yeah you're, you're just making massive progress and you've you know you only got uh, what you got uh, four gears left to shift if you want to split them so you're in 14th gear here. So that's 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 making rapid progress, and you you're not busy. You're not flapping around here if you don't need to. So you don't need to run through every gear. That's what I hate about the sequential thing in the game, is you're you know you're flapping away on the stupid paddles to uh, get anywhere. And having the stick, you can you can really kick going. But anyway. I hope all this hasn't been too confusing. Um, the 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 basic rule is these numbers mean something, and uh, you know what, the, what you'll get used to it. And a big number means um, whether it's the final drive differential ratio or first gear ratio. They they should call that low gear because this is low gear. This is first gear but I should say low gear ratio. Anyway, the bigger the number, it's what I would call a shorter gear. And it means you're gonna get less speed out of it, but you're gonna get more power, more torque. So this first gear, that is a, sh a short gear. This rear end, that's a tall number. 336 is a small number, that's tall. And that's gonna have less power uh, available at the at the wheel so you want uh, for for power you want the big number for speed you want a lower number and uh, essentially what you got to look at so you know and this is a nice compromise with this taller rear gear you've got a shorter first gear so that sort of offsets the disadvantage of having the tall final drive you've got a little bit better gear reduction here in first gear. So if you're gonna run a really tall final drive, that 219 uh, right here, this 219 may not be the way to go with a 336, unless you're running really light. But if you're running, uh, what do we have here? Like here's a 433 or 456, you're gonna want that 1219 probably. So, yeah, well, that's it. A little transmission 101. Um,
hope it all makes sense. If it doesn't and I need to clear stuff up, let me know in the comments. And uh, as always, you know, we'll catch you on the next one. Take care, guys. Bye.